I hope you're all having a wonderful day and welcome back to my channel. It has been so long since I filmed a video. Honestly, it feels like ages, probably not to you guys, but it's been over a month since I filmed a video. So I thought it'd be perfect to do kind of a get ready with me talking about what I've done the past month and also do a makeup tutorial for the first day of school. So it's been like over, well, it's been about a decade, definitely over a decade for me since I've been in middle school, about a decade since I've been in high school, which makes me sound like really old. I swear I'm not that old, but I don't feel old, but apparently it's been a while since I was in school. But I know like for me, like when I'm going to work, I want like the most basic makeup ever. Like maybe takes me around like 15 to 30 minutes if I'm trying. So that's kind of the look we're doing today. So not like first day of school glam, but more like you're two or three weeks into it. You already have like your classes down, you know what you're doing. You want to kind of get into your routine and be as like quick and efficient in the morning. That's today's makeup look. So I hope you guys are excited and let's just jump right into it. So I didn't buy everything from Sephora, but my room is a mess right now. I did my friend's makeup for her wedding like two weeks ago and I still haven't unpacked. I'm like the worst at unpacking. It just takes me a long time. So I grabbed everything I would want to do for today's video video and I threw it into one of these bags. So that's why it's all in a Sephora bag, but not everything comes from Sephora. It's just like easy for me to contain it all in this bag. Starting off though, I'm using my hourglass primer. So you don't need the full size. If I were you, I would get like the travel size, but it's great for if you have oily skin, preventing oil buildup for throughout the day and also like filling in your pores as well. So this is like my favorite primer. It's been my favorite primer for like at least five years and I don't even want to change because I'm so afraid of like not having this primer in my life. This honestly is about too much of it. So you want just like the smallest amount of that and it's white, but when you put it on your skin, it will like completely fade away. And I just put it right in my T-zone here because this is where I see oil. Again, if you are more of an oily person, you might put it in your cheeks. I typically am a little bit more dry. I do have a moisturizer on right now. I just see oil build up in my T-zone and that's why I'm putting it just in those like four main spots. For foundation, I am using the Hourglass Stick Foundation. So, and I know typically for back to school makeup tutorials, people do tend to use more affordable products or products from the drugstore, which I have done, I think in the past I've done that. Um, but today I'm using products that I absolutely love and I use every single day because they're my absolute favorite. They're not necessarily affordable. I can list some suggestions down below for you guys if you're interested. Um, if you're oily, you're kind of gonna want more of like a matte foundation. And if you're more on the dry side, you'll probably want more of like a dewy glowy foundation. So what I'll do first is I will just draw it on my face directly. This is like as pale as I get and this is like my fair shade in the foundation. I have like a tan shade and a fair shade. This is the fair shade and it's still like a little bit too dark. I'll make it work. So I kind of just draw it on my face in like the couple areas. Some makeup artists will go crazy with this. Um, I think Jacqueline Hill's one of them where she'll just like completely like cover her face in this. I won't do that but maybe a couple little dots under here. I like this foundation because I feel like you can also put on more of it. It's very buildable. So if you do have spots where you have acne, I know I had like a little breakout right through here. I feel like it covers it up really well. So that's really why I like using this foundation. Then the brush I'm using is this Sigma Kabuki brush. Honestly, I don't know how much this is. So it might not also be affordable as well. I'm sorry. Um, but they sent this to me and I'll be honest, I haven't used brushes to apply my foundation in the longest time ever since using a beauty blender. I just feel like it's so much easier. It looks so natural. So like I really don't use brushes anymore. They sent this to me and I was like, okay, I'll just try it out. And I love the coverage. I just feel like it blends it out so well. So if you guys are, are interested in using a beauty blender, you want to use a brush. I really like using this type of brush. I just feel like it gets in the like, crevices mainly because of the shape. And I guess the shape is patented or there's a patent pending on the shape, but because of the, it comes to like a point, I feel like it gets in my nose area really, really well. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of buff that into my skin and go in circular motions. And again, we're trying to be very efficient in the morning and go as quick as possible. So I'm not being super precise with this. Just want to make sure I get the coverage on and blend it out so there's no harsh edges. But I hope you guys have been having a really great summer so far. I did a lot more trips than I planned. That's partially why I haven't been on here in like a month because I did not anticipate how busy I would be. So what I was doing is I was working Monday through Thursday, 10 hours a day. And then on Fridays, I had that day off. I thought this would actually help me with creating videos and make it so that I had more time to create videos and edit them and have Fridays off. Um, but then I ended up like being super like, 
planning I don't plan things at all but like I was like a super planner and like I went to Squamish one weekend that's in um, Canada so I went to Canada one weekend I last minute bought tickets to go to Disneyland um, well I already had my annual pass so I didn't buy the tickets to Disneyland I bought the airplane tickets there um, to go with my family and I I have the footage from that. I just haven't had the time to edit it, but I do have a video coming of my first visit to Galaxy's Edge. It was so cool. So I'm excited to share that content with you guys. Um, and then after that, I went to Idaho. Oh, and the weekend way before that, I also went to like on a camping trip with friends. So I've just been busy every single weekend and I just haven't had time to film. Plus working 10 hours a day, I have like maybe three hours in the evenings before I go to bed, which sounds really lame, but I literally had like no time and I was so exhausted. I had like no desire to film at all. So that's kind of where I've been. Do you guys do anything fun over the summer or have any fun trips or anything? I just feel like the summer is a great time to even like do staycations and hang out here or wherever you live and just get to enjoy the area because I feel like everywhere is so nice most of the time. Um, at least, well, some places are really, really hot, but like here in Washington, like the summer is just so beautiful and I absolutely love it. But as you guys can see, this coverage is really nice. I still have a little bit of like a glow here, which I really like. Sometimes with foundations, like stick foundations, I feel like they're very matte and I feel like I look so dry because I naturally have dry skin. But what I really like about this foundation is I can still see a little bit of glow underneath it. So since I'm going for more of a natural to light coverage look, this is about as much foundation as I'm going to do. But again, if you'd like, you could go on a second round with the foundation you can definitely layer it up depending on what you're looking for but I wanted to keep it more natural looking so that's why I'm only doing one layer and I blended it out where you can still see some imperfections like you can still see like an acne bomb here or there or a little bit of difference in color so basically if you guys don't know what like light coverage is or full coverage light coverage means that there's like barely any foundation on there's just a little bit to make it look like your skin's all kind of even um, medium coverage is in between light and full, I would say. And then full coverage is like, you can't see anything. It's like a blank canvas. Like all you see is that one color. And then you have to kind of go back in more with like blush and bronzer to bring some color back. So, um, I'd say this is more of like a light coverage. It might be a medium coverage for some people, but for me, cause I'm used to wearing so much makeup, this is definitely more of like a light coverage look. If you notice your makeup does tend to kind of crease throughout the day or settle into any like lines, I would recommend using a powder to set it. So I'm actually using the Thrive Cosmetics. I think this is their filtered effects. Oh no, yes, no. Yes, it is filtered effects. I saw there it said soft focus HG setting powder, but basically it's their setting powder from Thrive Cosmetics. I love it. This is honestly the only powder I'll use. As you can see, when I just do a little bit on like a fluffy brush, and give it like a nice even coverage it just like does the job so quick and i feel like it doesn't dry me out so as someone with dry skin i have a hard time finding powders that don't make me look like the sahara desert but i feel like when i use this powder you can still see a little bit of glow underneath without taking all that away so not even stopping or breaking this clip apart just to show you guys how quickly I can apply this powder, how easily it sets it, and you can still see that glow underneath, which I think is really important, especially if you have dry skin. But yeah, super easy to use and it gets the job done. Next up, I'm going in with powders and I'm using the Hoola Light Bronzer. Um, this is a bronzer that was sent to me by Benefit Cosmetics. They first sent it to me, I think when it launched, and I remember looking at this and being like, this is a joke, right? Like this matches my skin tone. This is actually like the palest I've been in a while, but normally this is way too fair for me. And I'm like, why this does not work for my skin tone but after applying it I'll show you guys here this is a brand new one but I literally hit pan on my other one because I use it every single day I feel like it gives the nicest wash of color and it kind of acts as like a soft contour without being like too intense like you can tell just nicely kind of gave some definition back and some color back without being like wow you're wearing a lot of bronzer did you not get tan at all so I love it it smells really good I want to say it smells like it smells very tropical I don't think it smells like coconut but it smells really good and even when I'm really tan like this is again fair for me when I'm really tan I'll still use this as a base just because I feel like the texture is different than the normal hula bronzer love that one too but I feel like the texture of this is so smooth it just makes my skin look flawless so as you can see I'm just kind of doing the outskirts of my face because when I get tan I typically tan on my forehead around my cheeks and I'm just wanting some more definition around my jaw. 
but as you can see it gives like the nicest wash of color compared to the other side this looks great this i mean this still looks okay you could definitely do it without it but i feel like it kind of gives some definition back without being like too orange i feel like some bronzers are really orange and if you are fairer that will definitely pull more orange whereas i feel like this bronzer looks very subtle it doesn't look orange at all and just gives a really nice wash of color so i love using this i use it every single day i don't even know where other one is but i definitely was getting to the bottom of it so i'm glad they sent me another one whenever you like use a powder around your face like a bronzer or a blush you want to kind of brush upwards and back because then it will kind of help like lift, like it'll lift your cheekbones. And I'll do like a little bit around my nose, not a whole lot. Basically, I'll just kind of tap a couple times and just go one, two on the sides. I'm not really like a nose contourer, <laughs> but I like to give like a little definition since I have it on my cheekbones, maybe right underneath my lips just to make them look a little fuller. But that is about it. So very light on the bronzer. You can definitely go heavier and you could also use the regular Hoola color as well just to add some more color. But the Hoola light has been like my best friend. Even when I'm like really tan, like I still love using this every single day. I honestly don't have a favorite blush at the moment, um, but I've been using this NYX blush. It's a little old. <laughs> um, so I know not hygienic, right? Um, this is the shade HDB 11 Amber. I don't even know if they make this anymore, but what I really like about it is it has a little bit of color. It's not pink. I'd say it's more like a rose color, but it's more of a neutral color. And I definitely have more neutral undertones, but I like it because it's very like subtle, even though it is a little bit deeper and darker. It's not like bright pink or orange. It's definitely more of like a neutral color. So I'll just kind of tap into that and kind of start on my cheeks and just kind of tap it in. That way, you know, if you accidentally got too much product, it's not the end of the world. You can blend it out but just to make sure I didn't accidentally pick up too much I'll kind of like press it in my skin and then I'll brush it back when I was working for Disney I went ham on the blush all the time and what I would do is I literally smile so I could see the apples in my cheeks and just like coat it on my cheeks it looks so weird doing this like while I'm talking to try to keep my cheeks like really full but I either will like basically start on my cheeks and move backwards or sometimes what I'll do too is kind of follow along the same lines of the bronzer and like keep right up on top of the cheekbones and don't bring it down. But since I already went there, I have to go on the other side too. Another thing to note too is actually blush will fade throughout the day. So what I'll do is go a little bit heavier handed in the morning, knowing that it will fade throughout the day. Don't go like too crazy, but like right now this is definitely more than I would naturally want. But then at the end, it'll like look like it fits in. It's just kind of weird doing this step because you don't have any eyeshadow on or mascara or eyeliner or brows or anything. So it looks kind of intense, but then like by the end, it'll be fine. Just don't go too crazy, but a little bit more than you're comfortable with and then by the end of the day you'll still look like you have like some color on your cheeks all right i'm moving on to brows and i'm using the benefit cosmetics this is the goof proof brow pencil in the shade six so this is a really great product um mainly for two different reasons i feel like this would be great if i had this like when i was in high school or middle school especially if you have more brows than me so my brows are really thin i do pull them out i've been pulling them out since i was like 10 years old it's like a stress thing it's not like a oh i'm kind of bored today let me pull out my eyebrows but it's something that i've dealt with it's called trichotillomania it's actually a lot more common than you would think i developed it in elementary school i was so embarrassed about it in middle school and high school too and i wish i had known back then that there were so many people that have it they're just afraid to talk about it so i try to talk about it as much as possible on my channel just because I don't know maybe someone's like new to my video and they've never heard about it before it happens actually pretty frequently where I'll see comments on my videos about people like not realizing it was a thing until I mentioned it and it's really cool so if you have this you're not alone but I do pull out my hair I pull out my eyelashes and my eyebrows some people pull out their head hair um, but that's why my brows look a little sparse but I can use this product and honestly anyone like even if you have like fuller brows maybe not like super full brows or even if you do anyone could use this product I feel like it's pretty universal when it comes to brow thickness that's why I'm using it today basically what I'll do first is brush through my brows with a spoolie and it's a little bit thicker of like a stick so it's not super thin there are some pencils that are really really thin I feel like those are really good if you do have sparser brows and you want to make sure they're really nicely outlined and you can kind of get the shape better. I feel like this is really easy to use, especially if you have like normal to fuller brows. You can just kind of quickly line it through your brows. The only reason you might not want to use this if you really don't have any brows at all and you don't even see a brow shape. So for me, like even though my brows are really thin, I can still see the shape. So I know kind of where to go with the pencil and I can just kind of follow along that shape. If you don't have any brows at all, I would probably recommend either like using a pencil or using like a liquid if you really want to outline your brows. But since most of you will probably have brows either 
like mine or fuller than mine. That's why we're using this today. So basically what I do is I just start off at the base. I'll try not to cover my face too much with this mirror. Um, so I start off at the base of the brow and I just kind of go very light handed because you can always, and this goes with anything, you can always add more, but it's really hard to tone it down. Um, even with blush, like, I mean, well, blending out powders is okay, but like for most things with eyeshadow or eyeliner or brows, like once you go pretty dark and pretty heavy handed, it's really hard to like take it back. So I always start lighter and light handed and then just kind of go from there. So I'm just kind of filling in any areas that are sparse and I'm barely pressing down at all. I'm going very light with this. I don't know if you guys can see if I turn to the side, but I'm just very lightly flicking this through. And I love products that have the spoolie on the other end, because what I can do is blend that out to make it look even more natural. So you feel like, this is like the one exception. You can kind of blend it out a little bit to tone down some of the color. So I'll do that just to keep it looking natural and then keep on going. So again, kind of shaping out the bottom there since I don't really have much of a shape down there and then bring it through the back end. And honestly, you can do this as quickly as you'd like or as sloppy as you'd like, because I feel like the goal is just to kind of give your brow some definition. It's not to have a perfectly contoured brow. It's just to kind of give some color, especially if you're like me and it looks like you don't have any brows. This is not the most perfect brow you've ever seen, but it'll look very natural. But that's about it. So it's really easy and you can see what a difference it makes. Like this looks totally normal, this side not so much, but it definitely just adds some shape to the brows and they were already there. So basically I just followed the same shape that I already had. I'm just kind of lightly filling them in. So this side, I won't talk at all just to show you guys how quickly you can do this. It's gonna be awkward though, cause it's gonna be like, a minute of silence. Okay, so it's looking a little dark. What I'll do is then take the spoolie and just blend it out. Kind of blend it upwards. And I'll do like minor touch of work, but like so, so simple, so easy. So if you have brows fuller than me, you can probably do it even quicker. It's just like there's little areas where I have like gaps of hair that I'm trying to fill in that make it take a little bit longer. But honestly, I'll even do this in the car on the way to work. Like I'm not really supposed to, but. And then maybe on this side, I'll notice there's a little bit I want to touch up there. That's it. So I'm um, not planning on cutting out how long it took me on this side. So it might be a little bit boring, just like moments of silence, but you can you guys can see in real time, like how long it took me to do my brow. It's super quick and easy. I just run it through again, nothing perfect. If you want, you can be detailed, but for me, it's like, that's an easy step I can go so quick with. So that's why I did it as quickly as possible while still being efficient and not like too sloppy. I'm all for efficiency and using as little product as possible and even like reusing products. So today we'll pretend that I use the Hoola bronzer on my cheeks, um, but basically I'm going to use this as my eyeshadow. So you could use the other color. I feel like this wouldn't really show up too much on my eyes. So that's why I'm using the original Hoola bronzer and it's again, hip pan. I use this all the time, like both of them, I use them all the time. So just taking a fluffy brush, I'm gonna tap into that and just kind of start to outline my eye. So I'm not trying to create like a super detailed look. Again, I'm just wanting to like add a little bit of detail without going crazy. So I'm mainly concentrating this right above my crease just to make my eyes pop more. As you can see, it looks kind of flat over here. It looks like I don't have much of a hood or a lid. So by adding in some color right here, it's going to make my eyes pop more and give them some more definition and dimension. For me, I love making my eyelashes pop. That's like my favorite feature. So that's why I'm not going super crazy on the eyeshadow today. So super easy. Same thing on the other side, just kind of quickly tossing that shadow on. I'm not even using different brushes. I'm just using one eyeshadow. You could also just buy a single shadow as well, whatever works. To me, I think it's great when you can reuse products for different things. So that way you don't have to buy as many things. I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, I did not have that much makeup. I mean, I think I had more makeup than I realized, but like, I would do this all the time where I'd have like one eyeshadow and that was my one eyeshadow I used every single day. 
usually it was a combination where I'd have like one brown shadow like this and then one was like a deeper brown just to kind of really accent the shape of my eye maybe put some in the crease area but that's it before putting on mascara i do like to curl my lashes this is an eyelash curler from sephora i used to buy them at the drugstore this is literally my favorite thing in the world because my eyelashes are so stick straight i love having them curled and super long because they are long but you can't always tell because they're so straight so what i'll do first is curl them if you haven't curled them before i would recommend not attempting it when you're like in a hurry in the morning and like in a rush because it does take some getting used to having something so close to your eye and it kind of looks weird like in videos so this might look a little strange I kind of just line my eye up like make sure it's in the holder and I'll start to lightly pinch down it's happened a couple times where I pinched down like too close and it's like pinched my lid and it hurts so maybe start to lightly pinch down and make sure that you're not on your eye and I'll just do maybe a couple different squeezes maybe adjust the curler a little bit just to make sure I'm getting a good curl and that's it and you can see it makes a huge huge difference if you have like straight eyelashes because they're long but they're just really straight so I will do that on both sides I'll look I'll look down a little bit too I won't look up when I have this I'll look kind of down so that's not very curly I kind of messed up on the sides there but yeah, if you've never used one of these and you want to, I would practice maybe sometime when you have a lot of time on your hands and you're not in a hurry. Um, you might accidentally pinch yourself. I've done it before. It's very painful. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but it happens if you're using this all the time. So then taking the Bad Gal Bing Mascara, this is like my absolute favorite at the moment. I've also loved using the CoverGirl for years. That was the one I was using in high school. I used the Lash Blast Mascara. It was my favorite. This is just my favorite at the moment. It's what I had on hand, um, but that's also a favorite of mine that I've used a ton when I was in middle school and in high school as well so just taking this and starting at the base of my lashes I'm going to start wiggling it up it's kind of going straight up and then using the point of this and kind of holding it at an angle to get these little lashes on the side I always have the hardest time like coating those and making sure they get a little bit of coverage just getting all those lashes But I hope you guys all have a wonderful first day of school if you are watching this as a back to school makeup tutorial. Um, I haven't been in school in a while and I'm super thankful. I love school, but I was very excited to be done with school and just like, I maybe I'll go back again in the future, but I was just so done. I actually was just thinking about when I was getting ready to film this video, how I had a stress dream. I used to have stress dreams all the time before school would start. And I remember having this stress dream in college where there was like in my dream we had to go back we were already in college but we had to go back to high school because there was like a class we forgot to take and everyone from my high school had to leave their college to go back to high school to finish up this one class and I was like oh my god like why am I here like I had moved on and I was so excited to be in college and now I'm back and it wasn't even like I had a bad high school experience like I love my high school experience my high school was awesome I love my friends um I just think the idea of like once you've moved on to something different and going back to it is so stressful like I think I had those types of dreams um, before every first day of school and before like transition so I'm sure you've had that if you're like going into middle school and you were in elementary school before or high school middle school like I feel like you always like have that stress of like oh my gosh I have to go back um and I just thought it was funny because I totally forgot about it until I was filming this video and I was like oh yeah that's right I had that dream that one time where I was already in college and in my dream I was in college but I had to go back to high school and I was like uh-uh uh-uh no way and honestly like truth be told I would not want to go back to high school and if you guys are in that stage right now like god bless you seriously like honestly I can't even imagine um again it feels like it wasn't that long since I've been in high school when I was in middle school some of you guys might not even know what this is um there was MySpace and MySpace was really popular when I was in like middle school and then Facebook became popular when I was in high school. And then I didn't even get Instagram until I was like a freshman in college, sophomore in college. Um, so I really didn't have social media in the same way that you guys have it today. And like, I'm so thankful because I already had FOMO and was like, you know, like everyone feels like that. Like you feel like you're alone and you see your friends doing things on social media or doing all these fun trips. And I feel like it's just so much worse today than when it was like even just 10 years ago, just being able to see everything. like. 
I think you'd still hear about like, oh, people going to parties or different things happening or people going on vacation, but you wouldn't like see it in your face all the time. And even for me, like as an adult, like I will be scrolling through Instagram and just feeling like garbage because I just see all these people doing like fun things and like, I have a great life, but you still see all that and you feel like, oh, like, oh why am I not doing that? And you're not realizing that like, Everyone else has like the downtimes. They're just not photographing it and posting it on social media. So honestly, if you guys are going through that and going through like middle school and high school and you're dealing with all that, like props to you. It's really hard as an adult. I can't even imagine what it's like being through high school because I know when I was in high school, middle school, like I was still figuring myself out. I mean, I still am, but like, especially back then, like I did not know who I was. Um, your brains are not fully developed and you're not making the best decisions. Um, and it's a learning process and I feel like everyone's the same and it's just so hard and it's just a lot. So proud of you guys if you're going through that because just know it's really not easy and I honestly can't even imagine being in your shoes and having to go through that with everything that like social media is today and I just feel like all the negativity and stuff like it would get me so down and like I didn't really develop anxiety or depression until like maybe senior year of high school and in college but like I can totally see myself like I would have in middle school or high school like had there been this much social media and this much presence and being able to see into other people's lives like that really didn't exist 10 years ago and I'm really thankful for it but it's crazy to think how much has changed in 10 years and even where things are going um so yeah I hope you guys are encouraged I'm sure you guys are stressed going into the first day of school I know I was every single year so if you are feeling like that you're not alone I'm sure you'll do great um even if you've already started school because I'm sure some of you guys have I hope the school year is going well so far so anyways that's my little back to school message I hope you guys are doing great and I'm sure you'll do wonderful this school year and just know that you're not alone whatever you're feeling if it's anxiety or depression or just feeling like you don't fit in like everyone feels like that they just don't talk about it and I wish they did which is why I'm doing it now so for lipstick I honestly feel like I just wore lip gloss a lot at the time when I was in high school or middle school I don't now but I'm gonna either use like this color it's kind of like a nude color from Mac it's the Aladdin collection or the Charlotte Tilbury one is also a favorite of mine I think this one's a little bit more expensive though. So I'm gonna use the Aladdin one, even though the Aladdin one is definitely limited edition, but I kind of like a color like this. I feel like it would look really nice. And honestly, if you don't wear lipstick, that's totally fine. I feel like I didn't at all in middle school. So maybe if you're college, this would make sense. Honestly, I didn't wear any makeup in college. I just didn't care anymore. I was like, screw this. I'm just gonna roll out of bed, go to my classes and come back. <laughs> but like just something to give your face a little pop of color. I feel like if you don't have like any color at all in your lips and you did everything else, it would look a little weird. So that's like the only reason I'm applying this right now. Normally I don't even wear lipstick. Honestly, when I go to work most of the time, I just wear like mascara and brows and that's it. Like that's, that's all I do. So this is like me trying, I really wanna look good. Like for something for like a meeting or something. Otherwise, I literally just do mascara and brows. So this is more makeup than I usually do. So if you did this, props to you guys. And that's it. So honestly, this video is gonna be way longer than this would normally take me because I'm taking the time to like explain everything and talk through it. Otherwise, it would be a lot shorter. This probably would take me about like 10, 15 minutes depending on how much of a rush I'm in. Um, honestly, like I mentioned before, I'll just either do like mascara and brows normally. Sometimes I'll do that like in the car on the way to work because I just don't have time. Like for me, like sleep is here and makeup is like here. Like I prioritize sleep. Um, but if you guys are really fun and creative, which I'm sure a lot of you are, you can do like so many fun things with your eyeshadow and be expressive. I just think there's so many more possibilities than from when I was in high school and middle school because I feel like no one wore makeup then. Um, even in my area, there's not like a lot of people who wear makeup, but there's like so much more makeup that like now than there was back when I was in high school which is so fun so I'm sure you guys get to have lots of fun creating with that I hope you guys liked this back to school get ready with me makeup tutorial let me know down below like is this like how much makeup you normally wear is this like more like less I don't really know I was trying to do my best to figure out because like this is what I would wear like going to call well no that's a lie I didn't wear any makeup going to college like I again like I mentioned before would roll out of bed I'd wear Lululemon's a sweatshirt, a North Face vest, and Ugg boots. And that was like my routine. And that was like all I did. I put my hair up in a bun, like in a ponytail and like go to class and that was it. So, um, but like in high school, I remember wearing like, I guess I did like a little bit of a liquid liner. I didn't do that today, but I did like a little liquid eyeliner. I did like one shimmery shadow. I didn't do anything for brows cause that really wasn't a thing. There really weren't any brow product products back then. Um, I think I did like maybe like a lipstick color too, but that was about it. Like this is actually more makeup than I wore. So maybe this is like a lot for you guys. So let me know. 
but this is kind of what I thought would be nice, especially if you want like maybe about like a 15 minute routine. This is pretty quick other than the fact it took me like 30 minutes to film this video because I talk too much. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this makeup tutorial. Let me know if you want to see more like this, like really basic beginner stuff. I feel like it's been done before, but then for whatever reason, my beginner makeup looks do really well. And there's always lots of you guys saying that you don't know how to use makeup. So if you guys would like to see more of those types of videos, well, please let me know because I feel like it's already been done, but maybe you guys still want to see content like that. So let me know. Have a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.